I finished making all my replica networks and reinstalled the board and it all wired incorrectly, I'm pretty sure. Now, using the Sun Restore as a reference was a help for sure, but not entirely because there's actually some differences. I think this is older. It's from a Princess and this is a debutante. What I noticed in particular was that there are some components used on here that are not on here. Let's see, yeah, dark down in here, some unused pads on the board. Whereas over here, a big black cap right there. Uh, some other minor differences. Uh, let's see, in here we've got a cap down in here. Does not exist on that board. Here we've got two wires running into this IF board, and over here only one. Um, so I, I think this is actually older. And this is a little bit later, slightly more refined design. So that's what I figure, anyways. But I think I got it sorted out, so I'm going to clear this out of the way and try powering it up. And I uh, figured that it's actually easier to have the CRT on this side of the chassis rather than over here. And just flip the lid and run the high voltage lead right into the uh, rectifier socket. I'll just, have to, I'll just be careful not to go near there because I got the uh, uh, door open on the high voltage cage. Now I'm going to be using my tuner from uh, my Princess of this w chassis. And uh, you recall in an earlier power up, I had some issues, one with the horizontal output tube, but check that out. Looks like somebody uh, crimped that tube pin, so maybe the problem was actually with this tube having a bad connection down in here, and it's actually the socket on that. So it might be fine. Another thing I found is that one of the tubes in the tuner had gone to air. It's the RF amp tube, so that could account for the crummy reception I was getting. So that's been replaced. Alright, so here we go. Everything's lighting up. No smoke. Static out of the speaker. I don't see the tuner to do something. Yeah, the tube's not lit up. The local distance switch on the chassis it definitely gets better in the uh, distant position where we get more gain. Make sure the antenna had fallen down. Just a single bit of wire here. 
That's looking a lot better. Oh, but that's not. Just lost. That to me looked like the horizontal also cropped out. Should be this tube right here. Horizontal oscillator, horizontal output, and damper tube. Hopefully it's not an issue with the flyback. Notice how the width slowly increases. Remember, I've replaced all the electrolytics here. And there it goes. Well, it turned out that the problem with the high voltage cutting out turned out to be a 6DQ6 that, although it tested good, and it worked okay in the set after a few minutes of operation uh, something would go wrong. I'm suspecting the tube has an intermittent short and it doesn't show up until it's been running for a while. I'll try to verify that later with a tube tester. Now another problem I had with my Princess set was uh, when I tried powering it up uh, 6DQ6 uh, and this chassis I had a rocket a few times and to get the filament to light up and occasionally it would go out. Uh, turns out the problem wasn't with the border with the tube socket, with the tube itself. You can see that uh, somebody had crimped it. I'm, I think what uh, had happened is the wire running up through the hollow tube socket pin was not making good contact and rather than touching it up with solder, somebody crimped it which malformed it, which I think was making a bad contact in the socket. Alright, so by putting in some good 6DQ6s in both chassis, I was able to uh, get rid of that problem. I then proceeded to uh, pull out this board and completely repopulate it with uh, the components, including new uh, networks. Oh, and along the way, yeah, I believe I found the problem. I had no sound was a, uh, a really messed up 9-pin tube socket on this guy 6U8 uh, half of which is used for the sound IF, at least I think it was that socket uh, you can see that these two had been cracked and somebody tried to uh, fill it in with solder and then this one was cracked and the uh, section is completely gone and several of the other sockets showed signs of metal fatigue so I replaced all the 9 pin tube sockets with some nice new uh, new old stock sockets uh, which got the sound and video working and uh, then went on to pull out this board which is where I'm at right now also did some work on the tuner removed corrosion replaced uh, some resistors inside that had uh, gone off spec a bit got it all lubed and cleaned up uh, this is the IF board that had been down in here underneath this Shield, which was also rusty, pulled that out, used some evapo rust on it, and uh, got a, uh, some work to do on this board, replace some resistors, and I'll get that reinstalled. But while I got it out, gives you a great opportunity to work in this area. Uh, so I replaced the original rectifiers and caps uh, years ago when I'd worked on this. Well, I did another round of that because the caps I had used. Back when I did this, back in the day, were not uh, not as good as I would use these days. I used 160 volt caps. And the originals, I think, were 150s. Well, I like these days. I like to go uh, 50, 100 percent higher with the voltage rating when possible. So this is what I've got in there now. Also, a better quality cap. These are rated for 85 degrees C. These are 105 degrees C, high ripple niche cons, ready for 250 volts. And the rectifiers, I've got 3 amp rectifiers in there. 
Now originally, the cap here, there was one mounted up here, and there was a three section cap over here, and a big multi section cap here. Well, the three caps that were here are now on the circuit board. So I was thinking about not exactly the optimal placement, but I'm sure that's uh, all I had to work with back then if they wanted to fit it into this cabinet. So three caps are actually used right over here. But with the original design, they ran wires all down through over here to the cap. So I'm running those long lines, increases the impedance going to the cap, and uh, they're not shielded, so you can pick up noise. Definitely, I'm sure back in the day, if they had had caps this small, they definitely would have put them on the board here. So that's why that cap's no longer there, and this cap is now mounted on this terminal strip. And the four section cap that was here, well one of them is now right here, and those are the ones used in the power supply. Yeah, and I'm sure, since there's plenty of room here, and you get a terminal strip, they would have put caps here back then if they could have. Uh, and one of the other caps that had been here is now over here. These three comprise the power supply. This electrolytic, this electrolytic, and this electrolytic. And here's the two rectifiers, fusible resistor, and choke. Here's the fusible resistor, and there's the choke. Yes, this thing that looks kind of curious, so that is a fusible resistor. It serves two purpose, purposes. One, um, when you turn the set on, there will be a surge of current both uh, to the tubes because the filaments are cold but also through these silicon rectifiers. Adding a bit of resistance here helps uh, prolong the life of these diodes. So these caps kind of act as dead shorts when you first turn the set on. Now these are pretty beefy rectifiers. Uh, they're not going to be so susceptible to, uh, to burning out as the uh, originals were. But uh, this also serves as a fuse. In case there was a short somewhere down in the set, this would burn out and could be replaced. There's also another fuse in here. It's a curious little thing. Down in here, the original insulation had cracked off, so I replaced it. That is extra for the tube filaments. It's this guy down here. They simply use a piece of number 26 magnetic wire, or they call it a wire fuse. And then that uh, supplies all the tube filaments. ID being if there was a short somewhere, it would draw enough current that it would actually burn out this piece of wire. Basically, it's a really cheap fuse. Uh, and there's a cap and power resistor down in here. Replace those. Now, the, the, the debutante did not have this cap. There are a few other minor wiring differences. So, uh, again, I had to be careful when comparing the two. Alright, so uh, what's left on this one is basically to replace out of spec resistors on this board, reinstall it, to get the shield back on there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and replace these other caps as well. So this guy is no longer needed because it's now uh, over here. So that just leaves two. Um, so one of so of the four sections that were here, um, uh, one of them is over here, one's over here. So we only are down to just two. Um, and uh, I want to redress the wires too. You can uh, pick up some noise, some interference if you don't put things uh, back the way they were. So they have some flexible straps here and here to keep the wires down. And there should be one here, but it broke off. Kind of keeps things together. And I believe there should be some tape around these wires to hold them together. So flopping around like this. I need several pieces along this length here. There's some notes in the service info about uh, lead dressing. Uh, Alright, so getting, getting close to being done with this guy. And uh, once this one's done, I'm going to do similar to the debutante that still has the original cap here and here. Kind of going back and forth between the two, so I always have one original I can use as a reference while I work on the other side.